take a look at this in action. We'll begin looking at a typical user story in JIRA. You can see I have my basic description and the acceptance criteria laid out here. So I'm going to be importing this user story into Program Manager and using this description to begin creating a test case on how I would validate this typical user story once it's been implemented. So we'll switch over to Provar Manager where we can see that in action. The Quality Center in Provar Manager is a high-level customized dashboard in Salesforce that allows you to view different things like your test execution across multiple environments, test projects, and as well as your test case management. This will allow you to view how many test cases have been automated, what type of tool you're using, and who overall owns the test cases along with their status. If we look at our project here, our Provar Quality Pipeline, we can see our test results for the week. We can see we have a spike here in terms of test cases that we run, and we're pretty consistent on our failures as well. This is a high-level dashboard, but we can also see things like who's ultimately executing the test cases, if it's via automation, what type of tests we're executing, which browsers we're running the tests against, and which operating system. We can also see things like the number of defects that we've logged for this particular project, over the course of this week, and we can sort them by priority and status, and we can see other things such as risk coverage if we have those defined. The next thing that we want to look at is a test plan and how we would implement our user story. So we'll jump into our JIRA project from Provar Manager that we have imported here. The issue in question has already been imported, so if we go to it here, we can see the user story and the reflected description inside of Provar Manager. But it's more than just a copy of all the data from JIRA and syncing between the two. It really helps us create a relationship between our JIRA artifacts and our Provar Manager artifacts. So from here, we can actually begin generating test cases using Provar Manager's AI integration. It will parse the issue description as well as the acceptance criteria and generate some basic validation test cases that are manual. Here we can select some tests that we would like to create, and we'll click Save. We can also regenerate the list if we don't like it. But once the test cases have been created, they will be automatically linked to this user story, and we'll be able to fill in the details from there. So let's take a look at the test case here that we have created from this Jira user story. We can see that at the start, it's in the draft phase, and it's not assigned to anybody, and it's currently not belonging to any particular test project. If we scroll down, we can see the individual test steps that have been created based on that story description. The test steps are created in behavior-driven development format, or BDD or Gherkin style. What we can do with this is we can take this as the starting point on how we would validate this particular user story has been implemented correctly. So we'll go ahead and assign it to our test project. And we'll assign it to Prover Automation here. Now if we go back to the quality journey page, we'll be able to see that this test case has been assigned to us and it's currently in the draft phase. The quality journey gives you an overview of some recently viewed records, the latest test cycles that have been run on the account, as well as any failing test cases that currently are assigned to you. So you get a high level overview of kind of your customized dashboard inside of Provar Manager. You can drill down into any of these test cycles directly or look at the project or the plan that they've been linked to as well. It'll also tell you the environment and the breakdown of the past and failed test cases in that particular cycle. So let's begin work on this particular draft test case. Before we begin, we have assigned it to ourselves and we've assigned it to our test project. So we're going to switch over to Provo Automation where we can complete the details. Inside of Provar Automation, via our integration and our seamless compatibility between our Salesforce application and our desktop application, we can download test cases directly here. So we'll right click inside of our project and select Download from PM. Once the test case is in the design phase, we can actually download it inside of Provar Automation to begin working on it there, and it will be automatically linked for us. If we open up the test case, we'll be able to see the step details that have been provided here. And we can complete those in Test Builder. So let's begin working on this from the automation user's perspective, or the QA. We'll begin by adding in our Salesforce connection to this particular test case. 
and we'll make sure that the Salesforce application that we're navigating to is the DreamHouse Lightning app. We'll save this, and we'll go ahead and launch Test Builder. Now again, these steps that have been generated from the AI integration are just placeholders. They're really to give you an idea of how the test should be created from an automation perspective. So we'll be able to follow it inside of Test Builder without having to switch back and forth. So to begin our test case, the Salesforce connection step will open up our browser, log us in to our admin user, and make sure that we're in the appropriate application as well. From there, we have a given statement that is checking whether or not the particular user is on the new broker screen. So first, we'll make sure that we're on that screen before we begin. We'll right click on our new button here and add that to our test case. We'll click Add and Do. And this will ensure that we're on the proper page. And then it will continue to click the new button on our broker home screen. In order to validate that we're on this new screen, we need to assert some element on this page. So let's select the picture field here and add it to our test case. We can change the interaction type from set to read assert. And we can assert the attribute that the control is enabled just to make sure that that field is visible on the page. So given the fact that we are on the create new broker screen view, which we have validated here, when the user tries to submit the form without selecting a department, there will get an error message displayed. So we need to try to submit the form without a department field being populated. So we'll right click on our broker name field and add it to our test case. I like to use unique IDs when we can for creating any kind of data in Test Builder. So we'll add and do that test step. So we've added a broker name, and now there is a default value for the department pick list, but we wanna go ahead and set that to none and add it to our test. Now, if we try to save this record, we should receive a validation warning. So we'll add our save button to our test. So we've accomplished our second step here. We've not selected a department field, and now we should see an error message displaying that the department field is required, which we do see that here. In order to validate that, we can right click on the department field again, add it to our test, and change the interaction type to read assert. Using this, we can insert certain messages on the particular field. So we can search for the message contains complete this field. If we add and do that step, we will now see that the UI assert will validate that particular warning message. We can rename our test steps inside of Test Builder to be a little bit more accurate. Validate broker new screen is loaded. And we'll also change our last validation here department field validation appears. And our test case is complete. So we can resume and exit out of test builder mode. We have completed this particular automated test case based on the manual test case description. Again, that was automatically created just by our user story being imported into program manager. Very simple. So now inside of automation, we can see we have our test steps already here. The only thing we need to do is upload this test case back into Program Manager. So we'll add it into our existing test plan here. We'll right click on the test plan and upload it to Program Manager. We'll be able to detect any changes or new files. And we do see that we have a test case here. It's showing us changed. So we'll go ahead and upload that. Test cases that involve metadata within Provar Automation will also include metadata coverage whenever they're uploaded into Provar Manager. So let's right click on the test case and we can select Open in Provar Manager to directly navigate to it. 
we already have it here, so we can just refresh the page. And if we scroll down, we'll see the test steps have been populated. We even see our data and our field values being referenced here. Once our test case has been uploaded and synced into Provar Manager, all the metadata component coverage will be uploaded as well. We'll be able to view the related metadata components from the Related tab, where we can see all the custom objects, fields, applications, and other metadata types that have been linked to this particular test case. This is uploaded automatically whenever Provar maps these fields and syncs it to Provar Manager. Additionally, we'll be able to manage metadata component coverage on a particular test case directly within Provar Manager, where we can add additional objects and other metadata types directly to this test. We can also see all the ones that have currently been added. This type of coverage is important at the Salesforce perspective because it allows us to view in greater detail how we're testing our Salesforce application across the board from all of the objects, fields, applications, and profiles that we're interacting with. We won't see any results per environment because we haven't run this test case as part of a test plan, but we do see the test case status is automatically set to active from the draft. So if we go back to our quality journey, the test case will no longer be in our board because we have completed it. So now the next thing that we would want to do is schedule this test case now that we've added it back into Provar Manager. So if we go back to our test plan, Here's an overview of the test plan page where we can set up different things like the scope of their test plan, associated risks and resources and things of that nature. Well, we can also see a breakdown of all the test cycles, which are test runs for this particular test plan. In the scheduling tab, we can create test plan schedules where we can execute our tests on a certain frequency based on a weekly, daily or hourly occurrence. And we can also configure how we want those tests to run. So we can run them across multiple environments, operating systems, and browsers. We can also select the version of Provar that we would like to execute and the number of threads that we want to execute on. There's also an auto split feature within the test plan scheduling that allows us to intelligently separate the test cases based on the test case execution history. Once a test run is completed, we'll be able to see the results in the job page. If we look at a previous run here, we can see one that has failed, and we'll be able to see a breakdown of the test cycles, and the results folder will be attached there as well. If we look at the test cycle in a little bit more detail, we can see which test case specifically failed. It'll be highlighted in red, and we'll be able to navigate directly to that test result from here. If we want to retry any failed test cases, the retry option will retry all failed tests by default, and we can also select individual test cases that we want to retry. If there are any defects linked to the test cases, we'll be able to see those in the right column here. However, if we navigate to the point of failure for a particular test case, we'll be able to go to the results and see a breakdown of, of the test step details there as well. So if we wanted to raise a defect, we can navigate to the test step in question and raise a defect directly there. We can set the priority and the impact of the defect. Then we will see the defect has been linked to that individual test step and the test case. We'll see it on the execution record as well. If we go to the defect tab, we'll be able to see the linked defect and navigate to it directly from there. The error message from the automation will be automatically captured in the description of the defect, and the test case and the execution will be automatically linked. Additional dashboards are available. If we go to our dashboards within Provar Manager, we'll be able to view those. This dashboard shows a breakdown of the latest test executions and defects that have been raised. We can create different filters, such as the operating system that we're looking at, the test suite that we were testing against, and the environment that we're testing against. Last but not least, 
we may want to trigger a test plan schedule that includes the latest test case that we just created. So I've shown you how to do that and I've shown you how everything connects between Automation Manager and Grid.